Think about your eyes, the human camera that adjusts, focus, interrupts, evaluates, applies color automatically, the natural reception and adjustment to light and distance, automatic. Think about it. Who created that? Who designed the eye? With all the technology, there's no replacement for the human eye. Even they have not been able to create a robot that is able to mimic the blink of the eye. If they made a robot to blink and imitate the blink of the human eye, it would throw the robot out of sync because he couldn't keep the synchronization going like the eye does. Just something simple like that. Who created that? Who mastered that? Who planned that? And who regulates that? Human beings themselves? What's your answer? Of course not. What about this universe? Think about this. The Earth is one planet in our solar system, and our solar system is one of the systems in the Milky Way, the example I gave you previously. Who created that? Who designed that? Who maintains that perpetually until it continues to expand? And according to one scientific theory, what is it? That the, that the universe is expanding as we are living. And one day it will expand until it will implode. Implode means it will explode from the inside, not from the outside, but cave in. Now this is a theory, we don't know. But we do know it is expanding, yet for all intents and purposes, it's not affecting the organization that we see. Who designed that? Who controls that? Is it man himself? Of course not. Man just stumbled on the theory yesterday. Certainly there's a creator, and that creator deserves to be acknowledged, and that creator deserves to be obeyed, because that creator has the only one has the right to legislate and to adjudicate and to be for humans who have the highest intellect to conform to. And definitely that creator has no associates and that creator has no comparisons. Did all of this synchronization, balance, harmony, variation, design, maintenance, operation, and infinite numeration, did this happen by chance, by random? And also do these things function perpetually and perfectly also by chance? And do they keep on reproducing themselves and maintaining themselves also by chance? What do you think? Of course not. That will be totally illogical and foolish. And we're not illogical and we're not foolish. But maybe we just didn't think about that. At least it would indicate that however that came to be, it is totally outside of the realm of human capability and we would all agree to that. We should all be in consensus to that, that all of this is outside of the realm of human capability. The being, the almighty power, God, the creator of the universe, the source of energy, the source of power, the source of existence, call him, call it, call the creator what you will. But the principle is the same. It is beyond the capability of human beings themselves. We are subject. We are subordinate. We are not the principle ourselves. The creator of existence has the knowledge to design, to proportion, has created all of this and is responsible for maintaining all of this. That creator is the only one that is deserving of praise and gratitude. If I gave each one of you 100 pounds or 100 dollars for no reason, if before you left here, I said, everyone here, just for coming, there's a hundred dollars on your way out. Don't forget to pick up your hundred dollars, but just leave your name and say thank you to the person who gives you the hundred dollars. Would you leave your name? Would you say thank you? Of course you would. No one, you would stand in a queue to leave. So I ask you, what about your eyes? What about your kidneys? What about your brain? What about your life? What about your breath? What about your children? What about the life, the opportunities, the resources that you have been given? Are you grateful for that? Or do you say, I earned all of that? Is the one that gave you life not worthy of praise and thanks? 
is the one that gave you life not worthy of your worship and recognition, my sisters and my brothers and my guests. That, in a nutshell, is the purpose and the goal of this life. One, to recognize and acknowledge the Creator. Secondly, to conform to the laws of that Creator. And thirdly, to give praise and gratitude and worship to that Creator. That's the initial purpose of our lives. Just as the initial responsibility of a child as they're growing up is to respect their parents. But before they can respect their parents, don't they need to know them? You know your parents. Therefore, you respect your parents because you know that you wouldn't be here if they were not your parents. Secondly, they nurtured you. They guided you. They helped you through school and all your problems. And even if you don't fully respect them or listen to them, you have to be psychologically dependent upon them and grateful to them, obligated and indebted to them. So what about the Creator who made your parents and their 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 parents and the whole world, this whole cosmos that we are experiencing? Is that Creator not worthy of your recognition? Is that Creator not worthy of your respect? Is that Creator not worthy of your praise? Is that Creator not worthy of your worship? It is just as fundamental and even more fundamental than respecting or recognizing your parents. That's the initial, primary, foundation, purpose of our lives. To come to recognize, appreciate Almighty God, the Creator, by scientific means, by dialectical means, through mathematical means, through worship, through reflection, any way you are able to, to come to the grips and come to grips with the fact that you yourself are not your own benefactor, but that you are benefiting from something which was given that you didn't even ask for. I don't think that anyone who considers themselves clever or scientific or analytical would have much argument with this purpose they may have their own set of rationales, their own justifications, their own ideas, their own theories, but it all boils down to the same thing. Because with all their ideas and all their theories, they seem to be headed in the same place. Because I don't see anybody that has escaped death. But the reality of life is that everyone Every day you wake up, you are closer to death. And that's what you need to think about. You're not closer to your objective. You're not closer to what you've been working for all your lives. You are closer to death because that is the ultimate place that all of us are heading. From the womb to the tomb. That's it. Brothers and sisters, this is something that you and I need to deal with seriously. We need to reconcile this issue. We need to resolve this issue. Don't let death sneak up on you because babies die. Adolescents die. Young, vibrant, intelligent, beautiful, well-endowed individuals die. Arrogant people die. Even executioners die.